following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Now let's join Chris Schenkel and the Professional Bowlers Spring Tour. Here at the Showboat Lanes in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're in our very first game of doubles competition. We're looking at Jimmy Keith, partnered with Ray Perez, leading by eight pins over Bob Benoit and Del Ballard. Again, a four. Jimmy Keith, the most powerful player on the professional bowlers tour, uh, he's the guy that can be the catalyst for some big scores on this Ray Perez-Keith team. Each player is bowling five frames on a designed lane. In other words, lane 59, Keith will bowl five frames, Perez will bowl six, five frames on 60. Incredible speed on that 16-pound bowling ball. Continuing to lead by seven pins now, reaching the midpoint of our first game. More after this. Budweiser and Bud Light are joining USA Today so you can vote for the All-Stars. Pick up an official All-Star fan ballot free wherever you buy Bud and Bud Light. Then enter the All-Star Pick a Pair Trivia Sweepstakes. Answers appear every day in USA Today, your number one source for sports coverage. So look for this display and vote. Today, we're going to find out why America rides Monroe, Shocks, and Struts. Sir, why do you ride Monroe? It's the better handling. Oh, says her. Huh? It's the smoother ride. Better handling. Smoother ride. Better handling. Smoother ride. No, less Well, whatever your reason, see your Monroe ride expert for the best ride ever. <laughs> Guaranteed. No wonder America rides Monroe, Shocks, and Struts. I'd rather switch than itch, so I switched to Tegrin. Tegrin medicated shampoo controls all the major causes of itching and flaking, so Tegrin is more than strong enough for tough dandruff like yours. Wouldn't you rather switch than itch? What makes new cheese feel the cheese lover's burger? Cheese, 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 cheese. Three cheeses, two flame broiled patties. New cheese trio for a limited time. Burger King, amazing. Live at the Showboat Lanes in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ten professionals today instead of our usual five. This is the Showboat PBA Doubles Classic. PBA Doubles Classic lane conditions, Chris. 24 feet of oil heavy in the center of the lane, down to 41 feet, a little bit lighter dry back here. We have six lefties in the championship round. They're playing almost the rainbow shot. Out and around the righties, somewhere between the second and third arrows, out to the channel, hooking the ball back. Some real big scorers, and right now it's Del Ballard up on the right-hand lane. One of the great competitors, the reigning Firestone Tournament of Champion winner. Did it in April. He and his teammate Bob Benoit are down seven. Dell looking for his first strike today, uh, fumbling a little bit, leaving the 6-10. A style that's gotten Del Ballard a lot of respect and a lot of money around the country. He's got that cupped wrist, shoulder high swing, stays down on the shot normally, but that time he raised up about three or four inches with his head and pulled the shot high. He has struggled on the right-hand lane. His partner, Benoit, has been perfect. And speaking of Bob Benoit, he is off the chair and uh, ready to go in their burgundy shirts here team competition. Uh, they'll meet, uh, the winner of this doubles match will meet a pair of left-handers, Stephen Hardy and Andy Nyer. his head after the release knowing that it was going high. All the players so far, especially the big power players, Ballard and Benoit and Keith of, among these four players, have been tentative. They have to let the ball go. There's a wonderful lane condition out there. The scores have been great all week. The combined scores of all ten players in this championship pair has been 236. Wow. So the strike ability is out there, Chris. It's got to loosen up. Mm -hmm. done by Bob Benoit. 
So quickly up now, Ray Perez, shorter of uh, the, this team. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, and Bo, you mentioned a uh, fine amateur bowler. He definitely was that. Dominated the amateur ranks, won the Hoinke Classic and many of the other high-paying amateur tournaments. And he's trying to make the transition to pros. He's been looking pretty good as late. With strikes like that, very compact. We uh, ask the team this question. What makes you a good doubles team? Well, uh, uh, pretty much I got started off real good in the tournament. Uh, the, I was carrying very well, and he was getting a little heavy at the end, and he woke up Friday. <laughs> it's true. I rode the first 18. Match play, he rode the horse. So we pretty much deep up. Uh, Jimmy Keith, whom you just heard, left the 10-pin on the left lane. A saw 10-pin. Unbelievable. You can put that much power on the bowling ball and still not strike. And what Jimmy Keith and Ray Perez alluded to is a normal format of 18 games of doubles qualifying, then 24 games in the finals. Perez got him through the qualifying. Jimmy Keith has been the strong man in the finals. And right now, they will be leading by nine pins. We uh, mentioned Hardy and Nyer next, then Parker Bone and Dwayne Fisher, and our tournament leading team, Steve Cook and record-setting Mike Albee. For every man who wears brute, there's a woman who loves what he smells like. Because there's something about brute that's nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Thinking about you. Brute cologne, deodorant, and everything else. Brute, it smells like a man. New improved Kodak batteries last longer than ever. So when you need us, we'll be there. If you think being out of the house means being out of touch, you don't know Unidem. I told you before, this is a great cordless phone. Bo and I are at the Showboat Lanes for our uh, last of our three Spring Tour telecasts, most unique format, doubles. A lot of action, Chris. Uh, each player bowls five frames on a designated lane. They don't switch lanes. We have ten bowlers out there. We have six lefties. The one, two, three spots are all lefties. And our first match is still to be settled, so we have Ballard and Benoit up, ready to go. And they're bowling uh, for the championship plus $30,000 split evenly of course and here's the man with three wins this year including the Firestone and Dell has just had everything high or sliding by he's having an off afternoon for sure it's uh, almost his partner said to him ugly and that didn't mean his uh, facial composure it's his ball going down the lane he has to give it room get some speed and generate a little uh, pressure on the basically the non-winners they're playing against Keith and Perez. An anxious moment or two for Dell. He uh, very disgusted with what's happening to his shots today. Bob Benoit is keeping them close. They're only trailing by 10 pins, but as you see, through seven frames. And Benoit will bowl that all-important 10th frame. He's up there in the eighth. Just not attacking. I don't, Chris, we're not used to the five-frame format, and all, although the players really enjoy it, they look this as kind of a vacation with no pressure. It started to show up here once they start keeping score for the big bucks. I'm sure whomever wins this match will loosen up and we'll see some big numbers. I'd like to see a doubles 300. That'd be exciting. Mm-hmm. And you remember when we were here earlier in the year at the showboat lanes, it was Dal Ballard that defeated Bob Benoit 245 to 224, and they drove back to Dallas together. They are close friends. Now, Ray Perez, 11 pin lead, spare up, eighth frame. Good 
shot by Perez, mm -hmm. but a key shot for Jimmy Keith right here. The power player can give them a 21-pin lead going into the 10th frame against the experienced winners, Ballard and Benoit. Big shot. solid pocket hit, leaving the four. Bowlers have a lot of interesting hobbies. One of Jimmy's is darts. Can you imagine the, the velocity that the dart must go toward the target? Very popular on England also. Now, Keith with a conversion would keep his team in front by 11. A Nolan Ryan fastball. Hmm. About 24 miles an hour is the fastest we've ever uh, had the radar gun on a bowling ball, and that was Jimmy Keith, Hartford, Connecticut, when he defeated Marshall Holman mm -hmm. in the semifinal. And Bell finally gets one. Surrendering. Getting a high five from Bob Benoit. Side out swing of Del Ballard. Now watch this pin action. Hits the light. Watch the action of the head pin. It goes to the sideboard, intercepts the four, the six slashes out the ten. That was the money frame. Now, for the first time in the match, Bob Benoit with a strike in the tenth can make it close. All right. Bob Benoit, who formerly owned an auto body shop and his partner Del Ballard, a muscle car fan, in fact, hoping to win here today so he could go to Cincinnati and buy a Shelby Mustang. But there's a Cincinnati bowler on the other team that may keep him from doing that. And right now, the destiny all rests in Bob Benoit's hand. They have never been ahead in the whole match. They trail by one pin with this strike. They could take a 10-pin lead. tug on that by Benoit. Just got it inside his target line. He'll finish the game at 2.05. Keith and Perez going at a 2.07 pace. Chris and I recall with how Ray Perez struggled in the clutch mm -hmm. in Hartford and he pulled much better in Fresno as next chance against Pete McCordick last year. Let's see what happens in this 10th frame. This is our first match. Left-handers next, Steve Hardy and Andy Neuer, Neuer rather, to be followed by Parker Bone. Ray Perez needs to fill 19 or 20 pins in the 10th to win the match. 18's a tie. Anything less, they lose. Well, it's so important for a young man in, in his career, especially on a professional bowlers tour, where almost every game goes to the last frame to build that self-confidence. Perez struggled in Hartford, came back and bowled well last year in Fresno. Now the next time he has an opportunity, he rolls as good a shot as you can possibly roll. So now he only needs nine pins on two balls to ice the victory. I'm sure he'll get it. We're live at the Showboat Lanes in Las Vegas. Jimmy Keith will advance and go against Stephen Hardy and Andy Nyer. That next here on ABC. Jack, are you having an affair? What? Are you having an affair? Not this week. Then what's with the new attitude? You think you're 16? 18. What is it? It's you. I'm serious. So am I. New Thrive makes thinning hair look thicker and fuller. But it's not just what it does for your hair. How serious? It's what it does for your head. Sure, I know painting. Sky blue, lemon yellow. Want to know any more? Ask Ace. Ace five-star latex house paint, just $7.97 a gallon. And this two-speed seven-inch oscillating fan, just $6.88. Hey, Ace is a place for me. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. 
I'd put it out and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Don't you touch You're not going to take her away from us. A court ruling kept them from protecting the child they loved. Based on a true story, little girl lost tomorrow. A perfect game starts with a perfect equipment. And Bowler Supply is right up your alley. Select from bowling balls such as Vector, Hammer, Thunderbolts, and more. Personalized fitting and custom drilling to improve your game. Check out the colorful selection of bags, shoes, and apparel. With a pool player, rack them up on a new billiard table. Choose from in-stock tables or have one custom crafted to complement your decor. We stock accessories, too. For all your billiard needs and the largest inventory of bowling supplies in Central PA, visit Bowler Supply, 401 Carlisle Avenue, New York. John Travolta is a sound effects specialist who witnesses a bizarre accident. Look, let me tell you something. I was there. That tire was shot out. I heard it. I recorded it. And saving the sole survivor sets off a killer's insane plan to eliminate the only witness. I've decided to terminate her and make it look like one of a series of sex killings in the area. A spine-tingling movie by Brian De Palma. Starring John Travolta, Nancy Allen, and John Lithgow. Blowout. Tonight at 11.30 on TV 27. Hoop du jour, Sunday at 1 on TV 27. The Professional Bowlers Spring Tour, brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Monroe Shock Absorbers, for shocks and struts, America rides Monroe. And by First Brands Corporation, makers of STP Son of a Gun Protectant. And the first match won by Perez and Keith, 216 to 205. They'll go against the two left-handers. Hardy and Nyer will go in the set next match. Parker, Bone, and Fisher in the semifinal. Our tournament leaders, Cook and Alby, will be very tough to beat. And earlier, Chris Schenkel had a chance to present to Mike Alby the Budweiser Points Trophy as he won the Budweiser Trophy. And this week, uh, Alby did receive that or will receive that from Chris. And here is Alby with his point lead. Ballard right in there, Peter Peterson, Monicelli, and Boss. Now Chris Schenkel with Mike Alby. Time now to award excellence. All season long, we've been talking about the Budweiser Kingpin Point standings. The winner has been determined, great Mike Albee. Charlie Hodges, Pro Sports Coordinating Director of Budweiser, is here with the spoils of winning. Mike, uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of Anheuser-Busch and the Budweiser brand to present to you this beautiful uh, trophy, signifying you as the 1989 Budweiser Kingpin Award winner. And along with it goes this check for $25,000. Congratulations. Thanks, Charlie. I'd like to thank Budweiser and all the people at Anheuser-Busch for sponsoring the Kingpin, but also for supporting the Pro Bowlers Tour on the winter and spring tours. Thank you. And believe me, uh, a worthy winner, we congratulate Mike. An unusual glass trophy and lots of money. Now, stepping in from Methuen, Massachusetts, Stephen Hardy, a non-winner, 24-year-old. He is uh, paired with Andy Nyer of Sellens Grove, Pennsylvania. First shot ever in a championship round. Talking to the ball, and it's a seven pin. The wide sweeping hook of Hardy comes in light, drives the head pin to the sideboard, and almost slices across and takes out the seven see if he can make this spear. One of the most difficult spears for left-handers for some reason is over in the left corner. Throw it hard and straight, Stephen. You'll be off to a good start. Twenty-four-year-old with a big arc. And you'll remember Ray Perez, who closed out beautifully in that first match. A 216 to 205 victory over Del Ballard and Bob Benoit. Here's Perez. First shot for his team. Second game. Three six nine ten. It's expected Ray Perez to come out charging in that first shot after loosening up and winning that first game. You see the overhead shot. He's playing right around the first arrow on the right-hand side. 
lets the ball drift high, starts with a tough spare. Chris, it just doesn't seem like anybody can loosen up. There are some good scores out there if they just let it go. Averages were big coming in, but there's pressure in winning a $30,000 first prize in the title, especially for those that have uh, yet to win. And we have a few of them in our field of 10. Only one, three, three players left that are eligible for the Firestone mm -hmm. Champions. Jimmy Keith. Ripped him. Well, he's the man that can make the difference. Jimmy Keith is probably the most exciting young player to come on the tour. He's a little bit wild, sporadic with his shots, but he's one of the players that even the PBA players like to sit and watch. Now, here's Andy Nyer, second championship round appearance. Leaving a seven, the man whose best year was 1988 when he won 28,971. This year, only 9,995. Notice in the um, doubles competition, Bo, uh, teammates firing up the other. Rooting for them. Mm -hmm. Don't want them to let them down. It's, it's a sad feeling when you let your partner down. Sometimes you can justify letting yourself down, or at least console yourself when you let your partner down and sticks with you for a long time. Stephen Hardy in Bethune, Massachusetts. And back up Ray Perez. Bo, you won in 1981 with Sam Zurich, and then you and Earl Anthony paired one year at least. 1983, Earl and I bowled. Uh, Earl got me most of the way, and then I struggled again on TV and let him <laughs> down. We came down to the last shot, and uh, we finished second, but it's an exciting tournament. Ray Perez. Jimmy Keith, I met him when he was 16 years old, Chris. West Palm Beach, I was bowling an exhibition, mm -hmm. and I said, anybody in this field want to come up here and get whipped by one of the best professional bowlers in the world? And nobody said anything. This little boy, come, well, he wasn't that so little, comes up and he says, I can whip you, Mr. Burton. He shot 268, and I've remembered his name ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's really, really found the pocket here now. And we're talking about Jimmy Keith, a 22-year-old professional from West Palm Beach, Florida, leading by 21. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it. The son of a gun from STP. Shoot the dash, seats, tires, and roof. Son of a gun protected. Man, what a difference. The product. The vehicles, the testing grounds, the results. STP Oil Treatment is the edge. So crisp and clean, so refreshing, it's the king of beers. The strength of gymnastics and the grace of figure skating combine to create the caress symphony of sports on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. Yes, it takes teamwork in marriages, too. Jack and his wife, Victoria, operate the showboat lanes, 106 total. World's largest bowling center. Uh, that title they actually inherited when Edison Lanes in New Jersey shut down last year. It was 112 lanes. A nice complex if you've never visited here at the Showboat. And a busy one. That's for sure. Andy Nyer, team trails by 21, can cut that margin to 11. Yeah. And they come to serve for his team.
Andy Nyer. Watch this inside out arm swing. He gets that ball behind his back. Now he'll drive through right to that right foot, which makes him a good center of the lane or inside player. If a player drops the ball behind his back slightly, he usually bowls better on the inside of a bowling lane. And if he bumps it out a little bit like Tony Marisi does, uh, the player that did so well a couple of weeks ago, he's usually a better outside player. To cut the lead to one. bad break. Steve Hardy thinks he's just about going to even the match. He comes in light. The only thing he can do is get the ball over here by the 10 pin and maybe bounce it out in the 7 or vice versa. It can go either way, but uh, he should at least get one of them. That's one of the real bad breaks of today's ball. So he needed a Mark Roth type break and converting the 7-10. Incidentally, Mark Roth and Marshall Holman finished 11th former winners. Professional bowling, the other team gets a bad break. The split by Hardy and Nyer. Now it's up to Ray Perez to jump on it right away. Oh, fire in the eyes of Perez. Transmitting it over to his partner, Jimmy Keith. They won the first game, if you just joined us, 216-205, to 205, eliminating Del Ballard and Bob Benoit. They had six strikes in this doubles competition. Let's watch the release of Jimmy Keith, how he sets up in the position, and then a, how he cocks that wrist. He actually is double-jointed, where his thumb turns back all the way to the inside of his wrist. That's how he gets that power. There it is right there. Sort of like a Mike Tyson punch. Agreed. As much leverage and power as you'd ever want to need in the game, Chris. And everybody has said is once Jimmy Keith learns how to control his ball and a little bit of his temperament on the lane, he could be one of the best players that ever has showed up on the PBA Tour. And he looks much more under control this time than his previous performances. Now, what he does to throw it straight, he just does not cock that wrist. He keeps that wrist flat and throws it hard and straight. Nyer, only his second television ever. First one was earlier this year, and his partner in his very first. And following an open frame, he and Steve Hardy needed it. Dwayne Fisher and Parker Bone will be up next or warming up. Chris, while Bones walking up, uh, warming up, you see Nyer get a great break as the two pin goes, the three pin goes to sideboard and takes out the six. Strike up for this team. Seventh frame. Two four seven. This young man who was driving a bakery truck for his dad in the family business back east before he decided to come out here on the professional bowlers tour does not give that ball enough room in a key situation where he could have cut the lead of the two right-handers down to just 24. Now it's still 34. So the son of the owner of Hardy's Bakery in Lawrence, Massachusetts, another open frame leaving the two, trailing by 46. There's a lot more work to painting than just the painting. So use a paint that'll keep you from having to do it all again for a long time. Pittsburgh Paints. Our paint is tested and researched, so we know it'll last and look beautiful for years. Pittsburgh Paints. You work too hard to paint with anything less. Right now, save 20% or more on Pittsburgh Paints and Stains at participating Pittsburgh Paints dealers. What makes new cheese feel the cheese lover's burger? Cheese, 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 cheese. Three cheeses, two flame broiled patties. New cheese trio for a limited time. Burger King, a main cheese. New improved Kodak batteries last longer than ever. So when you need us, we'll be there. You can 
Indy 500 champion Emerson Fittipaldi leads Hart's finest into Milwaukee for another classic, the Miller High Life 200, tomorrow on ABC Sports. Showboat Lanes, Las Vegas, second match, doubles competition. Jimmy Keith has left the 2-4-10. Needs this to maintain their 46-pin lead. They have a chance now. Looked like Nyer and Hardy were completely out of the match. Ray Perez throw, rolled a nice strike in the seventh frame. Keith could have put the lefties away. Not to be opens up. Now it's just 32 pins. The match is up for grabs. Eighth, ninth, and tenth frames coming. After an earlier open frame, uh, they came back with a strike, and Nyer has done it again in the eighth, and the lead has been cut to 32. Now it's up to Steve Hardy. He can cut it to 22 with this shot in the ninth. Loosening up. A lot of pressure. First time ever on TV. And this is his biggest shot. I don't believe they can win the match if Hardy doesn't strike here in the ninth. world of sports immediately following it'll be the caress the symphony of sports blending gymnastics and figure skating bow pleasing to the eye both of those forms of competition putting them together it's got to be very special Rosalind Summers one of my favorite Bart Connor up there I'm excited to watch it now ninth frame has been consistent throughout this match. Closed fast in his victory over Ballard and Benoit. 22 pins. Now Jimmy Keith to increase it. A try. Right now, Jimmy Keith can close the door on the Nair Hardy duo. A strike here slams the door. Strike. Mm. We have an overhead camera. Let's view it again. Watch Jimmy's release as he hits the foul line, that inside out swing, that cocked wrist, and see how he releases it straight up. What a wonderful shot of a power release. Now you want to see some pins do some talking. Adios. <laughs> is over. It's just Jimmy Keith must keep that ball on the lane, and I've seen him do some stranger things than throw it wild. Now he used his brain there. That's a winner, though, Chris. Very conservative shot, wasn't it? <laughs> That's the best place well, to be. All you had to do is hit the head pin. Right. So that means that Parker Bone the third and his partner, first time ever television appearance for Dwayne Fisher. <laughs> at least 25 miles an hour. Jimmy Keith now. He and his partner Ray Perez have won two doubles matches here in Las Vegas. We're live. Stay tuned. We'll return for our third game following this. Bo Burton's Bowling Tip of the Week is brought to you by Kellogg where you can get a taste for the healthy life. Today's bowling tip is on the foul rule. I'll show you two examples of times you're penalized by not knowing the rule, and I'll show you two examples of the most common fouls. The first one occurs when you throw a ball, something falls out of your pocket, you reach over to pick it up, and lo and behold, somebody says you're fouled. Not true. If you don't release that ball and touch over the line, it's not a foul. The second one occurs, often you women have this happen, is when you release the ball behind the foul line, it goes through the light, the light goes on, and they say it's a foul. Not true. You must touch past the foul line after you release the ball. Here's what happens, and sometimes people get away with it, and these are fouls. Watch this. I release the ball, I slip, grab myself, and somebody says, that's not a foul. It is a foul. Once you release the ball and go past the line, you fouled, you receive zero for that shot. And finally, the most common one is the old foot foul. You slide right past the foul line. That's zero for the shot. Remember, protect yourself. Know your foul rule. Look, they're my parents, and I tell you, they're acting different. 
I mean, they go dancing. Herbert and Jane dancing. I know, Mother thinks it's fun. She wears eye makeup now. I don't know what's gotten into them. Hmm, who's is this? Hmm. Why not the actor age? To help them get more out of life, people are eating better. Some have found Kellogg's product 19, 100% of 12 vitamins and minerals. Feel good about yourself. Tennis? They don't play tennis. Feel like 19 again. Now, let Bo help you score even more. You'll also fix problems, improve strategy, and practice smarter with Bo Burton's new bowling video. This video is for you. ABC Sports brings you Bo Burton's instructional video, Score More. Just $24.98 plus $3 shipping. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. That's 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. Over its life, a motorcraft battery delivers enough energy to light up a small park. Like candlestick park. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. A motorcraft spark plug has to fire 500 times a minute. Over its life, that's a spark five miles long. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. Ray Perez and Jimmy Keith have won their second match. Seven strikes, 221, Hardy and Nair, 192. Now, upgrading the competition from the standpoint of experience, especially that of Parker Bone III, and his non-winning partner, Dwayne Fisher, left-handers. Well, Chris, there were three left-handers in the top three spots, but one of them has been eliminated. Now we see the number of teams here, 109 doubles team. Average team score, 205. That's pretty high. And let's take a look at some of the other finishers. Monticelli and Walter Ray went down the very last ball. Another couple of lefties, Anderson and Christensen. There's a duo we all know, Weber and Boss, eighth place. Columbia and Pritz, steady all week long. Harold Sullins, he just won a couple weeks ago, and John Mazza, Marshall Holman and Roth, perennial winners here at the showboat. Mots Carlson, Scott Devers, the little lefties doing a good job as usual. Tom Baker and Schlegel, former president of the PBA. David Houston, Mark Baker, two looking good looking guys there in the number 15 spots. Figuera and Sal Bemini, two good names together there to get. Wonderlick and Ozio, 17th. There's two of the greatest of all times, Salvino and Stepanich. McCordick, Williams, they were here last year. Brian Goble, Bob Glass, big powerful guy from Kansas. Norm Duke, Chris Warren, and a couple little power players from Texas. Two more veterans, Pappas and Dickinson, Hall of Famers. Kevin McGurr, John Odrobinick, 23rd, and rounding out the top 24, Dave D'Entremont and Nick Judges. All right, and now we go into our semifinal game on Parker Bone the third, fifth television appearance of the year. Albi, who will be in the next match as tournament leader and his partner Steve Cook, had six TV appearances, three big wins. Parker Bone, three hole New Jersey. So he started our semifinal game having to wait after Keith and Ray Perez won the first two matches. We're live in Las Vegas. Should any more developments happen in Beijing and China, of course, ABC News will be covering it. Leaving a six pin on his first shot. Ray Perez has been High light, but always there in the clutch so far in the two matches as he avoids the 4-6 split. Ends up with a relatively easy spare, the six pin. He knew it at the release. Chris, mm. that is the exact pin he missed in Hartford yes. when he began his downfall. He missed the six pin in the ninth frame and came up and missed the three, six, nine, ten in the tenth frame in his loss at Hartford two years ago. Once again, he misses the six pin. An ominous start for this duo that's won two matches. They have had paired well, so let's see if Jimmy Keith can help. Two, four, eight, ten. Jimmy Keith can make this with his power, and the trick to making the two, four, eight, ten is roll the big hook ball. What he has to do is get the big hook over here in the two, four zone. The four pin will actually bounce off the eight into the ten. You don't want to just plow into him. That's not the way to make it. And he is playing this big hook shot. He can make that. 
Not to be. Not to be. After winning two games, can't allow their daubers to get down now. They started with two opens. That has really opened the doors. We look at first time television ever for Dwayne Fisher from Pensacon, New Jersey, 26 year old. And the highly respected Eastern Regional professional with a double for his team. What a nice shot for your first time ever in a championship round. Good, smooth swing, shoulder high. Now watch this arm swing. Tuck it into that left hip, inside out. Good release over the second arrow. And he just saws that five out as they are off to a quick 32-pin lead with the experienced Parker Bone at the helm. Parker leaving a 6-10, and it's the third year that they have paired. They were 10th here in 86, 23rd last year, and were second coming into our live coverage of the finals. Parker has struggled somewhat in his four previous TV appearances this year, not winning a single tournament. He's not eligible for the Firestone. Parker was second to Del Ballard here at the Showbill Invitational earlier in the year. Bowler of the Year in his hometown of Cincinnati. He had a spare up, the left of four. What happens to Ray Perez if he wants to study his game a little bit every time a guy is in the championship round he wants to is he varies his speed when he gets tentative. I marked down the last time he was on, he varied his speed 16, 17, 18, and 19 miles an hour on the same lane. That's not good. Our 28th season of bringing you the best in professional bowling here on ABC. And of course, in 1990, we will start January 13th with the Pinole Open for our 29th season. And we'll be on 24 weeks next year, culminating July 28th, a long season. Here's the man that has to take control in this match. The power player, Jimmy Keith, can incite his team to get going. He needs to throw some strikes. And again, light. 2-7 baby split. All he has to do is get that ball over to the left side, and he'll take out the 2-7 and seven as he comes in light for the second consecutive time. Head pin goes to sideboard, doesn't do the job on the 2-7s, and sevens, and needs to convert this to give some team a little momentum. Any questions? We're in our semifinal game. <laughs> Ethan Perez leading by 32. Some people still haven't tried A&W Cream Soda. We know who you are. Chris, have you seen my blue shirt? Hi. I'm going to be living with you until you try an A&W Cream Soda. <laughs> Trish. <laughs> it's so smooth and mellow. Ooh-wee. Do I smell dinner? That. So you have a choice. Try a regular diet A&W Cream Hi. Soda. Or try living with this man. Pour yourself an A&W Cream Soda. Nice beard. An electric razor doesn't shave that close. Such a razor, man. It's your face. Without electric shave, your beard just lays there. Electric shave stands up your beard, so it shaves down close, lubricates for comfort. Good tip. Electric shave for a closer, smoother shave. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback soccer. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva, man. So you still think lime and I dumb? Indy 500 champion Emerson Fittipaldi leads Carts finest into Milwaukee for another classic, the Miller High Life 200, tomorrow on ABC Sports. More IndyCar championship racing tomorrow on ABC. Capacity crowd here in this huge establishment. In this section there are 70 lanes. Ten professional bowlers have been pounding the championship pair here. We're in our third match, and we have a first-time ever bowler up now in the pink shirt, Dwayne Fisher of Pensacon, New Jersey. He is an, has an associate degree in business from Camden County College, and he works for a law firm. He really doesn't bowl full-time. Maybe he 
should. All right, earlier we asked the team, and especially Parker, why he chose Dwayne as his doubles partner. Well, Dwayne and me, we've known each other for about 10 years now, and even though he doesn't get a chance to ball out on tour a whole lot, I believe that our games are real similar. And whenever one of us is down, the other one is right there to pick him up, and it's real easy, relatively easy, for us to line up off each other. Uh, one of the reasons Parker is so successful, I think, is because he can read lanes well. Uh, this week, he led off, read the lanes real well, and then everything just fell into place. Well, they lead by 42 pins here now. And they made some good points, Chris. Uh, Parker Bone, the experienced player, what uh, what Fisher said is that he can line up off them. He can read the shots because Parker's been out here longer, and they have similar games, so when they get hot, they can, can run together, and that's important in a doubles match. Fray Perez trying to get the first strike for his team. After two victories here today, has left the 10 pin. Coming right into your living room, the ball goes out to about the third board on the right-hand lane. Perez finishes a little bit late, or behind the head pin, we call it. Does not get enough impetus on the six and leaves the ten. All right, let's project a little bit. Right now, Keith and Perez, with no strikes, are going at a 175 pace. But if they strike out, they could be at 225. Bone and Fisher going at 218 right now, so it's not over, especially in doubles competition. But you must start throwing strikes right now. And Jimmy Keith comes through the first. Remember, they open twice at the beginning, then three spares. has a game very similar to Parker Bone as he explained and what the similarities are are the arm swing pattern the inside out pattern ball speed and the amount of hook nice style that has won in nine regional titles well done more and more, the left-handers are becoming what we call inside players. Remember how they used to play the corner all the time? Not to be now. As you see this arm swing of Dwayne Fisher's tuck right inside, that's perfect arm swing. Recent bride, Parker's wife, Mary. They were married in the Howell, New Jersey bowling establishment. That's right. We'll be back with more of our semifinal game following this. Nature's like nourishing golden fields of barley as only nature can ensures the clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. Let's talk hoses. Water in, water out. Want to know any more? That's case. That's what I do. This 70-foot reinforced garden hose is $8.99, and you can store it on this Ames hose reel for just $14.88. Hey, Ace is a place for me. There's a new tire on the road, the Firestone FR721. It beats our bestseller ever, the famous 721, in several key performance areas. This new design means even longer wear, better wet traction, and a quiet ride. All at a really great price at your Firestone retailer now. So, you better get rolling. The new FR721. Price, quality, and performance rolled into one. Daryl Strawberry and the Mets go under the lights at Wrigley Field to face the Cubs. Or San Diego meets Houston, live on the season premiere of ABC's Thursday Night Baseball. Okay, Thursday Night Baseball, coming back right here on ABC. And come back is what is necessary here for Keith and Perez. They trail by 63, but if they can finish with six strikes, they can make a match of it but they're in a must situation, seventh frame. Only their second of the entire match and came at a good time, a double. The Miller 200, Chris, your friend Emerson Fittipaldi, mm -hmm. who you picked to win the Indianapolis 500, will also be racing in that race. I get a chance to watch him this time. 
Well, you'll enjoy him. He's a world champion that finally won his first Indy 500. Let's see if he can stay hot. Here's a guy who has to stay hot right here. Unbelievably bad break. Just too much power. What happens with Jimmy Keith right here is he hits so light with so much power, he takes the five pin and throws it. Watch the action of the five pin, the pin in the center. You hit the one, three. Now watch what happens to the five pin. You cannot throw the five pin behind the seven. Only Keith can do that, and he paid a penalty. Bowling is fun for uh, all degrees of competence. Also, you can vent some of your frustration, can't you? And shots like Jimmy just did. <laughs> Dwayne Fisher, right here in his first championship round appearance, can make it a cakewalk with one more strike. This team has five in a row. And you know what? Fisher turned to Parker Bone and says, I got it, partner. You know why? He pulled that ball about a board or two to the right of his target. It just set right in the pocket. And when a player knows he can do that, look out. If they go all the way, they will meet the tournament leaders two-time winners here, record breaker Mike Albee and his brother-in-law, Steve Cook. Make it six. All right, Parker Bone, the third, and Dwayne Fisher have come in and eliminated Keith and Perez, who had won two. We'll continue after this message and a word from our stations. Get set for outdoor living with the Memorial Day Savings Circular from True Value Hardware Stores. Grill your favorite foods on this Weber 18 and a half inch barbie kettle grill. It's just $44.99. Keep food and drinks cold in the Igloo 10 ice chest and half gallon jug. It's only $8.99 for the set. And fly the red, white, and blue with this Bissell 3 by 5 foot home flag set. It's just $6.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. Somewhere there's got to be a cure for athlete's foot. Step up to the mic. Mike? Mike? Mike It cured my athlete's foot. It's got something the others don't. My conazole. There's nothing more powerful. Hey, I'm giving away advice, not Mike Say, hey, what you got for my athlete's foot? Step up to the mic. Mike? Mike -a It cures athlete's foot. There's even a deodorant Mike Then I'll take the Mike to go. Step up to the mic. Mike -a Use the Mike coupon in your Sunday paper. After his dramatic duel at the Preakness, Sunday Silence is one race away from winning the Triple Crown. Witness the Belmont Stakes live June 10th on ABC Sports. We picked up Kareem. He's your Jay. Scores! The crowd goes wild! Cap! Hi, uh... Great crowd out there, huh? Oh, you know, they're here to salute you. I love them all. You know, I'd sure like to be in your shoes. Better lace them on real tight, because that's all you have out there. Just you and your shoes. Hey, Cap, who was the quickest player you ever saw? Nate Archibald, Kansas City. Who was the toughest you ever put a move on? Judy, sophomore, UCLA. Faster than any sailboat, they race across land at breakneck speeds without brakes. Come for a ride aboard a land yacht. He's finally made his Star Trek movie. See why William Shatner fought so hard to direct Star Trek V. And spend a day in the mountains with the Llama Ladies, two attorneys who traded careers in law for llamas. See it now, the weekend edition of USA Today. And see it from a different angle. Tonight at 7 on TV 27. Miller's Indy Car Race, Sunday at 4 on TV 27. We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you a special report from ABC News. Here is Peter Jennings. In China, tragedy continues to unfold. As we have reported throughout the day, the Chinese army and the military police and the riot police have consistently moved through the center of Beijing on Tiananmen Square, where the student demonstrators for democracy remain. At this hour, the army is making another move on the square let us go immediately to Beijing and Kyle Gibson, who will first tell us what she knows. Kyle? Kyle Gibson, uh, I'm on Shanghai Boulevard, just east of Tiananmen Square, where ambulances continue to race by. We hear gunfire to the west. There was just moments ago a, a, a flight of a 
a mob of people from the west to the east. I don't know what they were running from. It is very difficult to tell from here. However, we believe we saw armored trucks moving into the square from the west. From this perspective, uh, it looks like several armored trucks were moving into the square, but it is very difficult to tell from this far away. About five to 10,000 uh, people are still holding tight to this area of Chang'an Boulevard. They are meeting in clusters, and they seem uh, to be willing to stay here a very long time and to be very anxious in finding out what is happening in the middle of the square. Back to you, Peter. So after a lull, there seems to be action at Tiananmen Square again, and let's go up and try to get a higher perspective from the Beijing Hotel overlooking Tiananmen Square. Let's see if Jackie Judd can give us some sense of what the movement is now. Jackie? Peter, in the last 40 minutes, there's been a lot of action around the square. First of all, the lights, which had been turned off earlier, have now been put back on. In fact, they almost, they're so bright, they look like spotlights. And then out of the west, we had a military convoy making its way to the square. I also believe that I saw several armored personnel carriers enter the square. The government is broadcasting an announcement over and over again. We presume it's to admonish the students to give it up. We have also heard about 45 straight seconds of, of bursts of gunfire. I cannot see very deeply into the square, so I can't tell you how many students are there. But I can say that above the building, which is blocking our vision, what I'm seeing is uh, puffs of white smoke rising up after we hear each round of gunfire. Okay, Jackie, thank you very much. Let me try to pull together what we're hearing from our other correspondents on the street as well. In fact, the convoy has been coming in from the west. It is one of the largest military convoys we've heard of all day, though the army has convened on the center of Beijing from many places, and these armored personnel carriers, which we refer to on so many occasions today, have been going around town trying to knock down the barricades, which the citizens of Beijing have been putting up repeatedly in an attempt to keep the army away from that hard core of student demonstrators, joined in many cases by some very hardcore militant workers who've been prepared to take the army on. In the casualties today, 40 people have been killed so far, including a couple of young soldiers beaten, we are told, by militant workers there. There was an attack on an armored personnel carrier in Tiananmen Square itself. Let's listen to Jim Laurie for a second, who has driven from the southwestern part of the city, where he's seen many of the casualties, back into the center of the city and get a sense of mood. Jim? Peter, it was actually difficult going as we tried to make our way across the city. The barricades that you mentioned that the citizens erected are still very much in place in many parts of the city, making uh, getting through the streets uh, rather, rather difficult. People all over the city got no sleep uh, during this night. They are still out in the streets in small clusters everywhere you go, in the small hutongs or alleys across the city and elsewhere. They are, they are under the street lights talking angrily among themselves about what this government has done, about what the troops have done. I have not seen such anger in a long time. People are saying, how can the government have done this? Uh, how can a government with so much blood on its hands uh, survive? And as we went into hospitals, people uh, cheered us. I mean, I was absolutely astonished by the applause that we got because they saw us as a way of getting the message out of what has happened in the last uh, 12 hours here, Peter. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. We've done our best to monitor the various hospitals around Beijing, concentrating on four in the areas where there has been fighting. We now estimate that 63 people have been killed in these confrontations which have been going on for many hours and that more than a thousand people have been wounded. The government lie now is that the government is counterattacking against those who the government says are trying to throw over the party and the socialist system in China. But as Jim Laurie alludes and our other correspondents there make it clear, the reaction on the street is that nobody believes them. We will make more out of this and try to give you a complete report during World News Saturday with Carol Simpson, which will be along fairly shortly on most of these stations. And if the situation deteriorates further, we'll come back immediately as we have for many hours. But it has been so bad, the Communist Party in China, after so much economic reform, once again making it clear that it cannot tolerate social reform. On the streets of China, the enemy today has been the Chinese, and the enemy has been the Chinese military. Ironic, when there is democracy trying to bloom so many places elsewhere in the communist world. I'm Peter Jennings. This special report has come to you from ABC News. We now resume our regular program schedule.
We now rejoin Chris Schenkel and the Professional Bowlers Spring Tour. In the second frame when he doubled, it looked like he pulled the ball a little bit, but just didn't catch it. Two mistakes, he ended up with a line drive and a box score for a strike. Here, he gets good lift on the ball, pulls it again, and ends up with a wide open split. Breezing along so well in the previous game, combining to shoot a 278 to Keith and Perez's 204, Bone and Fisher down by 27. We're in the championship game. Today, we're going to find out why America rides Monroe, Shocks, and Struts. Sir, why do you ride Monroe? It's the better handling. Oh, says her. Huh? It's the smoother ride. Better handling. Smoother ride. Better handling. Well, whatever your reason, see your Monroe ride expert for the best ride ever. Guaranteed. No wonder America rides Monroe, Shocks, and Struts. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. Put it out, it just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recovering athlete's foot. Use it regularly. It'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Nature's light, enriching our full, fresh hops, as only nature can, brings out the clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. I'm Frank Gifford, and coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, some of the greatest names in figure skating and gymnastics come together to perform as one, hand in hand, in the Crest Symphony of Sports. Brian Boitano, Roslyn Summers, and Robin Cousins from figure skating, and Bart Connor and Christy Phillips from gymnastics lead a cast of stars in an exhibition of grace and power that has never been seen before. Plus, just one week before the Belmont Stakes, the final jewel of the Chrysler Triple Crown Challenge We'll have a preview of Sunday Silence's run for a place in horse racing history. It's all just ahead of 4.30 Eastern Time. Now back to Chris Schenkel and more bowling. Thank you very much, Frank. We're live at the Showboat Lanes in Las Vegas, Nevada. The 10th PBA Doubles Classic. Two victories by Perez and Keith. Then Bone and Fisher eliminated them with a powerful 278. Now the championship match, 30,000 to the winning team. They are in the lead. Steve Cook and his brother-in-law, Mike Albee. They have three in a row, shooting in the fourth frame. They can increase the lead over Bone and Fisher to 37. Mike Albee, if your brother-in-law was a right-hander, would you still take him as a partner? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not uh, left-handed or right-handed, you know, with family, and uh, we get along good together, and it's just kind of a fun week for us, and we just go out and bowl. Yeah, I definitely would take Steve. Uh, Steve and I have bowled well for about six or seven years together, and we have a lot of fun out there, and that's the name of the doubles. Have fun. It's a release for most of us to get to bowl together, and uh, it's not so tough. Uh, all the pressure's not on you now. It's, it's on uh, both of you, so it's a little bit easier to take. Okay. They are loose and ready. Steve Cook and Mike Albee, five in a row here in our championship game shooting for their third doubles title. And Dwayne Fisher, who has only made one mistake in nine previous shots, finds himself in arrears by 47. a pivotal shot in the match. Parker Bone has pulled both shots on the left-hand lane. He got away with it in the second frame, got a strike. In the fourth, he opened the door for the cook albee duo with his 4-6-10 split. He must strike here to keep some pressure on the tournament leaders. And three in a 
the sleeper nine for Parker Bone. What's happened to Parker Bone is he looks at the lane and says, what is happening? He read his first shot in the second frame, as you see an overhead shot, as being perfect. He didn't realize he pulled it. The next shot, he just gave himself credit for pulling. Now he's made an adjustment, and now he's playing the lane incorrectly. He's going to struggle the rest of the game. Last of three spring tour event telecasts here on ABC Sports after 16 winter tour telecasts, but we'll be back January 13th, 1990 for the start of an even longer telecasting season. 24 events next year, right on through July. Now Cook for six in a row. And instead, it's a 379. 379, a couple of theories of how to make this. One, some people say slide the three pin over in the seven. Hopefully the seven will kick back and take out the nine. I kind of agree with that theory. The other is just pile drive the three nine and hope you get a kick out of the pit. Let's see if Cook can make it. Nobody's ever made it in a championship round. So a freewheeling and confident doubles team have found uh, a little nick in the armor, an open frame in the six after five. Watch Mike Albee now. Great temperament. Mike and Steve married sisters. The Kanepa sisters. Mm -hmm. And Tammy, Mike's wife, looking at that overhead score sheet. Expecting their first child in late October. Momentum had left a little bit the Cook Albee team when Steve Cook opened there in the sixth. Albee didn't quite have the punch there in the seventh. Could not afford to miss the seven pin. It would shoot new life into the Bone Fisher team. stubbed his toe before the line, thus he missed the shot. Mike Albee has not missed a seven pin in the championship round since 1982. He missed two of them in the Grand Prix that we held in Paris, France. It cost him the title. This is his next time, seven years later, he misses a seven pin. Let's see what effect it has on the final outcome. Dwayne Fisher, new life, seventh frame, only trails by 21. What a comparison here is Dwayne Fisher, first ever television, Mike Albee in his 49th. And Albee, the outgoing player, and Dwayne Fisher, a little sedated, even when he has received that gift of two open frames from the, from the Cook Albee team, but he must make this spare. for the price of one. That's her doubles competition. I know for Harry Golden, tournament director, it's been a very busy week with doubles competition. And uh, our PBA coordinator, Frank Esposito, long accustomed to doubles competition. Parker Bone must be the leader of his team right now. He has been shaky in his three shots. He must lean back, stretch out, and just put everything he has on this shot. faced with the 4 six, ten for the southpaw. Reminds me of a professional golfer who is putting and thinks he's putting well, yet he's pulling the putts into the hole. And all of a sudden he hits one on line and he gets, misses the putt. He doesn't know what to do, and that's what's happened to Parker Bone. You're not inferring that you ever had that problem. <laughs> if the cup was four inches to the left of my eyes, I'd make it every time. <laughs> All right, winner of 17 BBA bowling titles, Bo Burton. Here is Steve Cook with 13 titles, Roseville, California. What a break. The 
right place to look and give thanks. <laughs> look at this ball hanging on the first board. It is snaps very sharply. <laughs> he blows the, the five behind the ten. He's lucky enough to get the head pin to come out and take out the seven. He thinks it's a strike, then a split. No. Now it's something I can make. whose wife, Candy, back in California with their three children, is Stacy, graduated from eighth grade. Speaking of graduators, they're only the best in figure skating and gymnastics in the Crest Symphony of Sports. Robin Cousins, one of my favorite. Great choreographer. Bowling, Mike Albee shows you his skill. Joining Holman, Roth, Anthony, and Weber. And here's the shot that ices his fifth victory of the year. Watch his reaction. That's it, Mike. You can go to the bank, pal, with that 30 grand. Earlier talking with Mike, he said that a little more than a year ago, he took 10 weeks off in the summer doing so poorly. And here he's had a record-setting year. The standard is set very high, 264,000, 065, and 15 added to that today. And a lot of weeks left. Chris, you picked the, the uh, Indianapolis 500 correctly. I'm going to ask you to pick the Miller High Life 200. Uh, you have Andretti's in the field, Mears, Emerson, Fittipaldi. Who's the winner? Well, knowing the... Uh, Excellence of Roger Penske. I doubt if he would let another <laughs> another um, team take away a victory from either Rick Mears or Al Unser so or Danny Sullivan. I can bet on Mears then. The best this team can do is 187. Now 177. The game is over. So that Albie and Cook, you know, the tournament leaders winning in 85, 86, coming back here in 89, 15,000 to each of them. And as Mike Albie keeps all the bowling balls of his title victory, so he'll add another one along with uh, the trophy in his huge trophy room back in Indianapolis, where we'll go next year at Woodland Bowl for the United States Open. chance to host all our ABC crew back in the home state for the first time in a long time. In Indianapolis, we bowled there on the winter tour before, but uh, they've been awarded the U.S. Open, which was held in Edmond this year, won by Mike Albee. Exciting. 80 lanes, Woodland Bowl, Indianapolis, a wonderful town. Their football team should do quite well this year, Chris, and a lot of good things happening in your home state. Right. Cook a victory lap. The best they can shoot is 194, but it's all been decided. Well, the biggest thank you I want to give today is to our loyal viewers. They have been so consistent over 28 seasons, and we invite them back for a 29th starting January 13th in California. I will second that as Steve Cook, a possible 214. Also, I want to thank Dick Evans, uh, bowling and racing editor of the Miami Herald, retiring after 40 years in the paper, but he will continue to write bowling. He's in attendance today. All right. 214 to 177. Tammy Albee is there. Her sister is back in California, but the brother-in-laws have done it. wood trim is going. Your paint is why. Because most premium paints aren't formulated to stop moisture damage. And before you know it, your wood trim is gone. You need Rust-Oleum Wood Saver paint. Formulated with Teflon and other ingredients, it forms a superior barrier to resist moisture. So don't wait. Replace your paint.
or you could replace your wood. For every man who wears brute, there's a woman who loves what he smells like. Because there's something about brute that's nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Brute cologne, deodorant, and everything else. Brute, it smells like a man. What do you have? Give me two pizza pops, chili dog. Excuse me. Gosh. One minute. Sorry. Give me two pizza pops, the chili dog, a lark. Yeah. Lord. Gosh, I told you, to be hot dog kings, we need lots of Bud Light. Not full black? If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Now what you think? It's beautiful. Because everything else is just a light. Hey, what about my pizza puffs? The strength of gymnastics and the grace of figure skating combine to create the caress symphony of sports on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. Well, here they are. Great winners. Third time. Doubles classic. Steve Cook. We'll get to them in a minute. Jack Cook, general manager there with that 30,000, and naturally, uh, two for one today, two trophies. But your competition did well today, and they're with Nelson Burton right now. Bo. Thank you, Chris. Parker Bone, Dwayne Fisher. Uh, good season for you, Parker. Dwayne, you have to be a little bit surprised on how you started. Never been a championship round, eight strikes in a row. Yeah, I felt good when we started the match. I knew I had a better shot on the right lane. The left lane was a lot tougher, so we figured if it came down to the 10th frame, I had a better shot on the right side, so the right lane looked good, and I just kept going. Good performance for both of you. Parker, you're going to go on. Dwayne, back to the East Coast, make some money. Chris, you have some winners. Yes, and I can see why you both have said that if you were right-handers, you'd still choose one another. Yeah, we had a lot of fun out there today, and uh, Parker and Dwayne bowled just tremendous, and uh, they had the lanes figured just like we did. The left lane was tougher, and uh, that's why we wanted to finish on the right. Steve, that's number 14 for you. Yeah, nice to get off of 13. It's been a while. It's been about a year, so <laughs> I bowled pretty good, and I just, you know, today, today it ended up uh, working out for everything. I want to thank uh, Showboat, Jack Cook, Victoria, everybody, all the scorekeepers and everything. They were fantastic this week. Jack, a quick comment with that big check. Thanks, Chris. We've really enjoyed having the PBA here this week. It's been another great uh, year, another great tournament. Uh, congratulations, Steve and Mike. You guys took off a couple of years, and now you've come back strong, and Showboat's very happy to host the PBA, and congratulations, and here's your check for $30,000. Congratulations to a thoroughbred entry. you got to go now, Steve. Nice going, Mike. We'd like to tell you that the executive producer of ABC Sports is Jeffrey Mason. Today's telecast was produced by Terrific Carol Letty, directed by talented Larry Cam, technical director Les Weiss, associate director, we welcome him back, Jeff Cohan. Now this is Chris Shankle along with Nelson Burton Jr. saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada. Coming up next, a truly unique event.